What's going on guys? Welcome back to another hunting boot camp. Today we're going to be talking about bands. And I'm not talking about like the one that's on my shirt. I'm talking about like this. So if you're new to waterfowl hunting and you're wondering what the big deal behind all these bands are uh, or even what their purpose is, we're going to cover all of that and more today. So let's get to it. So there's all kinds of bird species that are banded, not just ducks and geese. They banned all kinds of migratory birds and even some sedentary birds. Those are for a different purpose usually. Uh, for example, like a pheasant could be banded for dog training purposes or uh, like for a hunt club. But we're not going to focus on that. We're going to focus mainly on ducks and geese. So there are four types of bands in use today. Well, I guess one of them's not really a band, but we'll include it just for information's sake. But the first of which is your leg band. This is like what I have here. It's just a simple ring of aluminum with numbers on it goes on the duck or goose's legs or whatever bird they're tagging his leg. Pretty straightforward. I know some of them, when they're younger, they'll put something in the inside here so it doesn't fall off the bird's foot. And then as they get older, it wears off. So, you know, they don't have to have a band that's too tight to cut off the bird circulation down there. But uh, this is, this is going to be your most common band by far. Next up is the neck band. Obviously, it goes around a neck. I've only seen those on geese. I don't think they're very typical for ducks. And actually, I've heard that they're moving away from using neck bands. Not all together, but they're kind of cutting down the use for the sole purpose that those birds, when they're decoying, are easily targeted by hunters. For obvious reasons, you know, you see a big red, red or yellow or green ring around a goose, you're probably going to pick that one out because you recognize it's a band. Um, but. That's, that's another type of band. The third type, and you gotta pay really close attention to see if you even have one of these. I didn't know about them until the last couple of years, so who knows, probably could have shot a duck or goose with them and not known, but they are web tags. They're just a little piece of metal that's inserted on one of the webs of the duck or goose's foot. They're just really tiny, so you gotta pay really close attention to see if you get one of those. And then the final one that's not really a band but I decided to include anyways is a radio transmitter. These ones are used to track the ducks in real time or like on a day delay. If you shoot a bird like this and you report it, even if you don't, uh, you might have some people knocking on your door asking to get the radio transmitter back. They will give you a fake one though should you want to get the bird mounted or if you just want to have it as a memento sake. But those are the four main types. There might be some other types of bands out there in use, but these are the four main types currently. So now we get to what is the purpose behind this? And the answer is really simple. It's simply to know more information about these birds. With these banding programs, we are able to find out migration routes. This actually led to the discovery of the four flyways that we know today that, you know, waterfowl come down from Canada, go end up in the southern US, Mexico, whatever. That's how we discovered those four flyways initially, was through bird banding. They also track age, sex, survival rates, harvest rates, live broods, a whole bunch of stuff. Just a little ring of metal or a hunk of plastic on their leg or their neck or their web of their foot. Or in the case of the radio transmitters, they can track where the nesting areas are, where the wintering areas are, breeding areas, and they can find new areas that they didn't know that those birds were going to or maybe they have adapted to for whatever reason. So you can get all kinds of information just from these bands and that is what they do it because ultimately they take all that information and they track the trends across years, across the years. And they, they learn more about the species, what habitat is very important, what is crucial to that species, where they can go and do like bird counts um, for determining you know, nesting survivability or new broods. And then ultimately, they can use that information to help when they're coming up with bag limits and hunting season dates. Now, this isn't the only thing that goes into that. There's a lot more than just, you know, band recovery rates and hunters calling it in. But this is, a, this is an important part of determining those season dates, of determining those bag limits. So now that we've gone over all the types of bands to keep an eye out for and what their purpose is, let's go over why these are such a big deal? I mean, look at it. it's It's just a hunk of metal, just a piece of aluminum, or a hunk of plastic hanging off the bird you just shot. What is the big deal? Why do people care so much about this little chunk of metal, chunk of junk? What is the big deal with bands? To keep it really simple, it's basically rarity. You know, you don't get them every day. 
you don't see them every day, they're they're not a common occurrence. It's just like shooting a hybrid or a quill light goose, you know? It's cool because you don't get them every day. For instance, this is off the first duck I ever shot. It was a mallard drake about probably 16, 17 years ago. I don't know how long ago, but uh, it's somewhere in that time frame. And I haven't even been on a hunt since where <laughs> we got a band. That, that's how long it's been since I've been on a hunt where we've shot either a banded duck or goose. You know, it's, it's a rarity thing. Now, there's some areas where getting banded geese is extremely common. They're like resident geese that are banded right there and then they'll just go around local cornfields and you can, you can shoot them pretty easily. But it's still a big deal even if you shoot those. There's also lottery bands out there, which is a really big deal because you can actually get money from them. I think it's like a hundred bucks, but still going out hunting getting a limit of ducks and getting a hundred bucks, that's a pretty good day of hunting. But basically the big deal with bands is because, you know, it's it's a memento from the hunt and you don't get them every day. The, the rarity makes them special to people and that is why they're so cool. Now we just covered rarity. What are, what are your odds for getting a band, you know? I'm not gonna go into specific odds, but you know, what are the species that are most common but what are the species that are most commonly banded? Well, if you're looking on the duck side, that's going to be your mallard. By far, they ban the most mallards out of any of the ducks. Second is blue winged teal, and then followed up by wood duck and pintail. And then it just goes down throughout all the species. On the goose side, Canada goose is the number one, followed by the snow goose. So if you're going out, Probably, like I said, those resident Canada's, that's going to be your best bet for getting a surefire band. Hunt somewhere where you know they banned them. And by they, I mean U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, your Game and Parks, Game and Fish. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different agencies that contribute to the banding program so that we can further our learning about these species and, you know, keep up with migration shifts or nesting, changes in nesting habits, all kinds of different information, like I said, can be gathered from these bands. And finally, make sure if you are lucky enough to get a band to report it, you know, uh, not only do you learn cool stuff like the sex of the bird, how old it is, how old it was when it was banded, where it was banded at, but it also helps those agencies that are doing the banding program, you know, it gives them another data point to add to their uh, database. So make sure you report those bands that you get. They're ex extremely important. They don't even have to be dead. If you happen to find one with a net collar swimming around at your local park or something, and you can read those numbers, you can report it, get a certificate. Let's say that that bird is still alive and well. Or even if you just find a better, or even if you just find a bird like up on the shore of a lake sometime during the summer or along a road. You know, I've heard stories of guys finding road killed waterfowl and they turn turn the band in, they get a certificate, and they keep the band. So uh, if you find a band, if you see one out there on a, on a duck or goose or any other bird, and make sure you report that because that really does help those guys out a lot. But that is basically all there is to know about bands. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to leave me a thumbs up. It really helps me out. Drop a comment, let me know what your guys' thoughts are. Guys, have you been lucky enough to get a banded bird? Let me know down below. Subscribe if you haven't already so you can stay up to date with the latest hunting and fishing videos as well as more of these hunting boot camps. It's not just on waterfowl. I did a couple turkey hunt videos. Probably get in some upland and some deer hunting eventually and uh, whatever else. If you can hunt it, we're going to try and cover it for all you guys. And uh, also cooking videos, bring those out every now and then. Be sure to follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter under High Prairie Sportsman. And we'll catch you out there, guys. See ya.